A breaking news alert off the top. Traffic is moving again on Interstate 10 through Orange County tonight after a head-on crash involving a wrong-way driver. It happened around 730 in the eastbound lanes near Highway 62. A car going the wrong way on the interstate collided head-on with a red pickup truck. Our crew saw paramedics rush at least one person to the hospital. First responders closed the inside two lanes for a while, but again, traffic is moving now. Tonight, it is finally official. The state plans to send 11,000 additional doses of COVID-19 vaccines to Southeast Texas. That means several mass vaccine hubs will be open next week. Now, here are three things you need to know. Number one, the registration process will continue on the city of Beaumont's website. Now, it crashed this afternoon, but it should be back online tomorrow morning. Number two, if you had your name on a waiting list, you have to complete the registration. And number three, you have to have an appointment to get a shot. No walk-ups will be allowed. Dejanique, the mass vaccine hubs will be limited to folks who are in phase 1A and phase 1B. So you have to ask, how did some teachers in Orange County get to the front of the line today? Little Cypress Mauriceville CISD found a way to do a vaccine clinic just for its staff. 12 News reporter Jordan James is live to explain how the district pulled this off. Yeah, Daisy Nick, over the last several months, there's been a growing push for educators to be prioritized in vaccine plans. Ultimately, this initiative came down to county leaders discretion. After weeks of searching and waiting for the coronavirus vaccines, we're all happy. A lot of us stay today after school to get this. Excitement is radiating throughout Little Cypress Intermediate School as the district prepares to vaccinate its employees. It's a personal choice, but having the ability and the access to the vaccine for those that are inter interested is a tremendous relief. The Hardin County Health Department, which services Orange County as well, allocated vaccines for educators in its distribution plans. That's why teachers like Samantha Arrington were able to take advantage of this opportunity. We work around a lot of people. We see kids, kids every day not knowing where they've been. Um, they don't know where we've been. And so just a sense of relief that um, after the second dose that the, my chances of getting it will be lower. Thursday, the district vaccinated nearly 200 employees. It's a trend that LCM Director of Health Services Kelly Meadows hopes will continue across Southeast Texas. I encourage other school districts to reach out to their health departments and to see if this is something that they can set up for their employees. If it helps one individual, it's well worth all the effort. An effort that Arrington did not think would be possible, but hopes others can benefit from. Definitely uh, would encourage anyone um, to get it. Um, do your research, and if you think it's the right thing for you, um, definitely, definitely get on the list um, and get it. Second doses are scheduled for employees within the district on March 4th. If you missed out on the first round, you can also be vaccinated on that day as well. Reporting here live in Beaumont, Jordan James, 12 News. All right, Jordan, so many saying once they get the shot, they feel so much relief. We heard that uh, from some of those educators. You know, as plans for mass vaccination hubs across the region continue evolving, many are asking who's going to staff them. The state hopes some of you will step up and volunteer. Texas has requested all licensed medical professionals or people who have a background in medicine to volunteer to help with COVID vaccinations. Silsby family nurse practitioner Barry Hoffman's been trying to volunteer since the start of the pandemic. Well, I think it's important that everyone get vaccinated if they want to be. And if the barrier to that is the lack of people who are willing or available to give the vaccines, I'm certainly more than happy to help volunteer my time to do that. Riceland Healthcare wants you to send them an email if you're interested in volunteering. The email on your screen there. They say volunteers will speed up the process, getting more people in our community vaccinated faster. After a rocky rollout, it looks like we've got it down to a science now. Today, Texas set a new one day record for the number of vaccinations administered. Governor Abbott tweeted the state was able to give out more than 152,000 shots. Texas was the first state to vaccinate more than a million people. And in a few days, we will surpass a total of 3 million folks who have received a shot. This comes as Texas has now vaccinated between 7 to 9% of our population. That's an increase from yesterday.
Medical officials are hoping those numbers will rise and a one shot vaccine could possibly help. Johnson and Johnson says it has asked the US health regulators to authorize its single dose COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use. If authorized, it could become the country's third active vaccine. By the numbers, no real change in hospitalizations in the past 24 hours in Jefferson County. The patient counts have remained steady. Today we have 120 COVID patients in the regular rooms, 41 in ICU. Both of these numbers are below our 14 day average, so that's really good news. In terms of percentages, nearly half of the COVID patients 48% uh, of the people in ICU have COVID, roughly one in five of the patients in regular rooms fighting this virus. So as we go to the big board, you can see clearly we're going down. Hospitalizations have started falling. We're down about 30 patients compared to a week ago, so really good news there. And we continue seeing a drop in new cases. Thursday, we added 90 new cases and no additional deaths. Folks, we hope the trend holds. All right, switching to weather, we do have some showers moving across the area tonight as a cold front does start to move in. You're taking a look at our roofing 911 sky cam. This is a view of orange, and if you don't see any rain tonight, don't you worry. There could be a little more tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Patrick Vaughn joins us for a time frame. Well, it looks like a crummy day, unfortunately, to end out the uh, work week. As we take a look, uh, Futurecast is going to show just some showers this evening, and then we'll clear out. And then start all over again. And it looks like we may not get out of the 50s coming up tomorrow. So periods of rain and in the 50s for highs tomorrow. Currently the front bisecting the area just now moving into uh, Beaumont. As you can see, clearing skies behind it. And uh, nothing real heavy as you can see. And uh, very little uh, slim pickings uh, across, uh, say, southern sections of uh, Newton County, Orange, and parts of Jefferson. So some sprinkles. But I think we're pretty much done for tonight, but it'll be back coming up tomorrow. Start off with uh, the clouds redeveloping uh, by 6 a.m. and about 47 here in Beaumont. We're up to a 60% coverage at 10 a.m. and 48 degrees. More on your forecast coming up on 12 News. All new at 10, they've got their guy. 12 News had the only cameras rolling tonight when a man wanted for the murder of a Jasper County Marine veteran was arrested. They found him a little before 5 tonight. Here he is in handcuffs. This in the 800 block of West Davis in Vider. The takedown, the result of investigators in Jasper and Orange Counties coming together on this case. Sheriff Mitchell Newman tells 12 News they believe Dalton Hinch killed 80-year-old Guadalupe Naranjo last week. Hinch should face a judge to be arraigned in the morning. Tonight, we're working to find out if Port Arthur police have made any arrests in an aggravated kidnapping. A woman is safe tonight after she was apparently kidnapped on Highway 73. The call came in around 1 o'clock this afternoon. Officers found the woman near a wooded area after a brief search. She was taken to a nearby hospital to get checked out. New at 10 tonight for the first time, we are hearing from Beaumont Middle School students who are frustrated with administrators. They ordered part of a Black History mural taken down. Administrators claimed it was politically controversial. Now the students disagree and say they weren't happy to see their hard work removed. 12 News reporter Amelia White is live with their perspective. Jordan and Dage, one student told me she felt like her history wasn't being told the right way and that her voice wasn't being heard. Stroke by stroke. He said, Zaya, would you like to help me with the wall? Seventh grader Zaya Caesar was passionate about putting this board together to commemorate Black History Month. The wall was Black people and their history. So it was like Martin Luther King, it was George Floyd, it was the fist for Black Lives Matter. Fists that have been raised high in the streets, placed on t-shirts and etched along sidewalks, signifying years of Black people fighting back against oppression. To me, it symbolized my life, your life, our, all of our lives, bl Black lives, period. Vincent Middle School students say it was an example of art imitating life. We took about a month to like decorate the wall before that Black history. What was meant to be a point of pride turned into a source of strife. Um, she told me today that the wall was reported. BISD administrators released a statement saying the collection of clenched fists was too political and was unrelated to the educational purpose of Black History Month. I was kind of confused at first. She wasn't the only one. Zaya's classmate, Jonte Harmon, was also taken back. It felt wrong to me because it's my teacher put it up because it's Black History Month and a lot of people felt like this was going to be 
a part of black history. Their art has since been replaced with a placeholder that reads insert black fist here. Seventh grader Nia Jack says history isn't always comfortable. We are here to stay and we're not backing down. We tried to talk to teachers and administrators today, but BISD said the statement was the only thing that they were releasing. We also reached out to the school board to see if they plan to further investigate this situation. We have not received word back yet. Live in Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News. In case you missed it, more help's on the way for Texas renters struggling to pay their bills. State officials plan to roll out a $1.3 billion rental assistance program in the next two weeks. Help will only be provided to households that make less than 80% of the area's median income. The new program will help with up to 15 months worth of rent. Investigators with the Beaumont Fire Department want to know what caused an explosion and house fire. This was about this time last night in the 3700 block of Hector Avenue. Neighbors tell 12 News a loud explosion shook their homes. Luckily, no one was hurt. The neighbors told us the homeowner was gone at the time. The blast destroyed the main home. The neighbor's homes appear to be okay. DPS troopers are investigating a deadly crash. This happened around 2.30 this morning along West Circle Drive, about four miles north of Viter. Troopers say Dallas Hemingway was driving east on West Circle at an unsafe speed. He went off the road and hit several trees. The driver and passenger, Tyra Hemingway, were ejected. Tyra was pronounced dead at the scene. Dallas has been taken to the hospital.